Hello ASS, welcome back to another video. As you guys can tell by the title as always, today I am going to be talking about two, I was going to do this, two houses that are known to be possibly very haunted in Mexico. So if that is something that you guys are interested in listening to today, please go ahead and keep on watching. And if you are new here, hi, my name is Brenda. I go by Beyond Belleza. If you would like to join my little community of ASOs, all you have to do is subscribe down below and turn on your post notifications so you do not miss a new video. Also, give this video a huge thumbs up if you do end up enjoying it whatsoever. It really does mean a lot to me and it helps out my channel in various different ways. Now, with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get right into today's video. Alright guys, let's just acknowledge we have a new setup in the back. And this is mostly temporary. I'm trying to get some other like um, battery powered candles to put down here to set the mood a little bit more than just like these little string lights because some of the bulbs are completely out. But this is what we're working with for now. It's a lot more tidy than my last one. So I'm really happy with it so far. It's going to be changing here and there, but just wanted to uh, mention that really briefly. But anyway, so... The first house that we are going to be talking about today is the house that's called La Moira, which is a house that is now painted all black and I will be showing you guys pictures of it and it really does give off a very eerie vibe. Just because I did decide to paint it completely black, it just makes it that much more ominous and this house is located in Mexico City and specifically it's it is in the San Miguel Capultepec area, I think is what it's called, and that is where it resides to this day, and they have, um, I looked through a bunch of pictures of it, it looks really cool. I always like how um, black houses look in the midst of all these other like brighter colored houses or buildings or just plain buildings, so it is just by itself, even without the legends behind it. It gives off a very creepy vibe and it used to be open to the public so you used to be able to go in there and take a look around and there was a lot of um, people who said that when they did go visit this house that they would feel like this presence around them like this cold feeling they would get chills that they would hear voices and see apparitions of things and so on and so forth so that is back when it used to be open to the public and this legend or this story I guess it's like a scary story that they would tell about um, something that happened in this house which I'm going to tell you guys about obviously and so that was before and now as I said it's no longer available to the public sadly but you could still look at it from the outside it's a um, it is privately owned now. I don't know when they decided to make that. Probably somebody put an offer on it. I don't know if just like some regular family lives in it or if they just own it and they leave it basically abandoned just so nobody else could use it anymore. But so the scary story that they tell about this house, La Moira, is that there was a kid who ended up wandering into this house because I'm guessing it was like abandoned or something so he ends up wandering into this house he is like an eight-year-old boy and his name is either marcus or marco i don't know i read two different articles with two different names but something like that i'm gonna call him marco for now so marcos wanders into this house i don't know how this even happened i'm just like kids just be wandering around their parents have no idea where they are i guess but Regardless, he goes inside and he starts hearing voices, allegedly. I don't know who always tells these stories. I'm guessing maybe he told somebody about this and then word got around somehow, if this is true. Because if it's not, if somebody just made it up, then we will never know who made it up. <laughs> but anyway, so he wanders in, he hears voices, and this doesn't end up scaring him. and fact it intrigues him to look further into the house because he just steps foot in it he starts hearing voices he starts getting scared and like has this really eerie vibe going into this house and these how 
these voices somehow intrigue him to go wander to some of the other rooms and he ends up walking up the stairs because it is a two-story i think two-story or more i'm not sure probably just two he goes wanders upstairs and he goes into the first room that he sees and as soon as he steps in it legend says that he sees an apparition of a man hanging and this absolutely terrifies him so he runs out of the house and he leaves and doesn't turn back basically and this is something that really traumatized him and he doesn't know if it was like an actual person or if it was just like a ghost or something he said it was an apparition not he says the legend says that he that it was an apparition of a man hanging from the ceiling and this torments Marco for the rest of his life and he can't stop thinking about this he goes into like a very traumatized depressed state for the next 10 years basically so I'm guessing by now after these 10 years he's like yeah 18 or if it was approximately 10 years I don't really know but the, he's a young man now and these thoughts about this apparition that he's that he saw at La Moira house they are just consuming him and then something lures him back into that house and he ends up going back to it after this traumatizing thing happened to him for some reason he feels compelled to go back to this house so he does so and as he ends up going up those stairs he ultimately decides to take his own life by hanging himself from the ceiling as the legend tells supposedly this is what he does and there are two theories as to th what this apparition was or if it was something like if there was something that possessed him to get back into this house and made him kill himself or if the second theory is that when he was eight years old he actually had like a an apparition of like a prophecy that this was like the man that he saw hanging from the ceiling was actually him and he somehow and whatever kind of mystical stuff is going on in this house he somehow saw how he was going to end up dying and this actually reminded me a lot of um what's that show called damn it's been a long time haunting of hill house on hill house where the like the crooked neck lady ends up being herself like she's been seeing herself this whole time and it's actually her that hangs herself from the ceiling that it reminds me a lot of that like it's been tormenting her like the whole time that she's lived in this house because it is a premonition and it's she's seeing herself but she's scared of whatever this apparition is, not knowing that this is how she ends up dying. Sorry, spoiler alert, if you have never seen that show, it's on Netflix. I, I think I messed up the title, but I'm not really sure. I'll just put it somewhere right here so you guys know what I'm talking about. But I thought that was really creepy, and all of the pictures of the house are super scary. I would like to tour it. I feel like it'd be kind of fun, but I've never done a haunted house tour, so... I don't know i feel like i would not want to walk away with something i'd be like these ghosts about to follow me home i don't think so not today ma'am so yeah very interesting story and there's just a lot of different um little hearsay sort of things like people who say that they have been to this house and that they've experienced things and so on and so forth as i said back when it was open to the public but yeah, there's that story, which is really spooky. I really enjoyed that one. Okay, so the next house that I'm going to be talking about is La Casa de Aramberi, which is in Monterrey, Mexico. I almost forgot the name of it because it's like, for some reason, it's kind of a tongue twister for me. I had to like look at my phone again. I was like, is that right? Aramberi? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in this house it was where a crime occurred and that is how it led to being a site for you know paranormal investigators and people who allegedly say that because of this horrific crime happening in this house that it is now 
um, a haunted location and it is haunted by the people who were murdered in this house supposedly so this house belonged to a husband and a wife who had a daughter and the husband uh, his name is Delfino and then the wife's name is Antonia and then the daughter whose name is Florina so this um, crime that took place was at 6 in the morning and uh, back in 1933 so this was way long ago this was you know bright and early in the morning and they weren't their bodies weren't discovered until like hours later like at, i think they said six in the afternoon so so just over 12 hours later and the husband was the one who discovered it he had been away for some reason, I think it was like something to do with work or something. And he came back to find a horrific scene. There was just blood all over the place and his wife and his daughter had been murdered. So it stirred up a frenzy in this town. It was a small town where things like this just don't happen or just didn't happen back then. And so the town was immediately alerted of this. The police were there like immediately trying to right on the spot like find out who did it initially obviously you're going to think that it was the husband who did it and that that was immediately ruled out by the investigators or the police because so they had a pet bird and he was a parrot so you know parrots can mimic stuff that people say like um phrases like little sentences and so on and so forth so their first clue came from this parrot actually the parrot was um repeating something that that they believe the wife had been yelling which she was he ended up saying um gabriel don't let them kill me gabriel don't don't kill me and so they were immediately looking for somebody named gabriel and then so it was immediately in that same neighborhood where they looked into um the nephews of somebody like named Senora Delfina, whoever that is, they, in this article, article that I was reading, they didn't really mention who this was or even explained who this was. They just said that the suspects ended up being the two nephews of La Senora Delfina along with two other young men who were neighbors of the family in the same street. And they immediately took them... Oh, sorry, I gotta... My foot's falling asleep. They immediately took them to get interrogated at the police station and it didn't take long before they confessed to it and they were like they were like, Yes, we did it and it was the police knew that it was somebody that the family knew for sure as soon as they they came to the house because there was no forced entry, but they said that they think that it was a robbery gone wrong because um, the husband said that that there was stuff missing in the house basically it was a robbery gone wrong but to me it feels like there was it was more than that because the way that they were murdered doesn't seem like it and especially because they were sexually assaulted it doesn't seem like it was a robbery gone wrong because why would you go to the extent of um sexually assaulting them if you were like trying to flee the scene after murdering them like you wouldn't first do that and then kill them and then flee with all the things that you stole from this house so there's probably more ill intent than what um, they like to let on so the town people immediately were surrounding the police station and they wanted to hang these men they didn't want them to just sit in prison with the possibility of getting out at any time they wanted them to get murdered immediately or get killed immediately because they were a danger to this little town and obviously I feel like in towns like this they're not gonna have like a, a high like quality prison where they will never be able to escape you know it's they didn't want to run the possibility of them escaping and while they were delegating on like what to do with the four men and like the deciding on what they were like if they were going to prosecute them for like life in prison or if they were just going to murder them somehow or kill them somehow i keep saying murder but just kill them i guess it is murder but they ended up um 
Okay, so the article that I was reading, it was all in Spanish, but what I took from it, it's like I'm trying to translate it as best as I can, was that these four men, they tried to escape, and then in the midst of all of this, police officers shot them down because they were trying to escape. So this was what the police said, but to me, I feel like maybe they just made up that they tried to escape and then they just shot all of them and they were like this is easier like we don't have to go through it like a better like legal way this is like 1930s i don't know what they used to do back then so i feel like maybe that's what they decided to ultimately do they're like just shoot them and then we can go parade them in the town and then people will be calm and then we can put this all behind us and move on basically so as you guys may know Back then, if you guys listened to any true crime stuff, they were okay with showing bodies, like put them, putting them up in like windows so people could come see them and like, so you could for sure see that they were dead and that it was them. So they ended up doing this with these four men. They ended up showing them to the townspeople and being like, they're dead. They tried to escape. We shot them. We can all move along basically. And so they did that, whatever. They ended up dead. And justice was served for um, this mother and daughter who were unfortunately murdered in their own home when they were just about to step out and um, start their day. And it's really tragic. So with something as traumatic and um, just horrific as that, I wouldn't be surprised if this place was haunted, but the mom and daughter are both buried together in the Panteon de Dolores in Monterrey and they got the justice that they deserved but the house is still in that same street and people have gone to do paranormal investigating and just you know tour the house look at it and see if they find anything if they see anything paranormal happen there and there's also reports of um, satanic rituals happening inside of that house as well so maybe even opening portals to other things that are in the surrounding areas so that's also very scary who knows what kind of stuff has gone on throughout the years in that house that people have you know conjured up because they're like they think there's something sinister in that house but as of 2019 there was somebody who they said somebody brave who ended up buying the house for three million pesos which i don't know how much that is in dollars but they ended up buying it and um i don't think they actually live in it again just like la moira house i think they just bought it and they have it and you can't trespass in it you can't go in it it's not open to the public anymore but yeah those are really creepy stories and very sad of course in any sort of murder case no matter how long ago it was very tragic and very um just scary like imagine having like you can't even trust the people in your own neighborhood like they were just trying to do something bad who knows what kind of things they were planning and why they even planned to do this in the first place i really have no idea but still really scary and yeah, those are the two creepy houses, or haunted houses, whatever you want to call them, supposedly haunted. And I really enjoyed reading those when I was looking through the articles trying to put this video together because I was running out of legends and I'm just like, what else could I talk about? And I was like, maybe I can start talking about like um, different locations in Mexico that are supposedly haunted or, or that bad things have happened, maybe even... Um, crime cases from Mexico that maybe people don't know about at all in the United States because mostly I'm pretty sure they're going to be covered in Spanish and obviously not everyone's going to know um, about those but just let me know what you guys thought about this sort of video I really really appreciate your feedback and I hope that you really did enjoy today's video and with that being said uh, oh before I do end the video um, the comment shout out for today goes to this person right here. Thank you so much for leaving a nice comment. As always, I really do appreciate when you guys leave me comments down below. And if you want to be in the next comment shout out, all you have to do is leave me a nice comment below, of course. 
Now, with that being said, you guys, um, thank you so much for watching. I love and appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to stay safe and be kind. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, as you guys saw, I changed up my background down here, as I said. And I really wanted to show you guys real quick this little box that was sent to me because it is so beautiful. And these are some roses. Let me just switch you guys around so you could see. Okay, so here are the roses up close. And they are in this beautiful velvet box. And they are from Rose Forever, who is a New York-based company. They kindly sent these over to me. They are so beautiful, you guys. And they have such a wide range of variety for these roses. They come in various different colors as well as different sizes for the boxes and different um, sort of materials for it as well. And these are preserved naturally with oils and they last up to a year, you guys. These would make a great gift for your girlfriend, your sister, your mom, whoever it may be, just so they could add a little touch of something in their decor you know whether it be in their room or in their living room or anywhere in the house they just look so beautiful on display i would like to thank rose forever again for sending these over to me if you guys are interested in checking them out i will leave their information down below but yeah guys look at how beautiful i am so in love with them